And we're live! Well, I didn't announce this, so I expect that no one is actually live right now. But maybe. Maybe some people are. But uh, welcome again to Wargamers Hangout. Again, most of you watch post-Hangout, so whatever. But I appreciate all of you who do watch live. And I greet you again. I don't know. As you can see, I'm getting more sun. I'm a little red. I went rafting down a river recently and climbed a mountain and just been very much enjoying the summer. How about you, Miranda? Uh, I am finishing up my Kickstarter, and that's all I do. <laughs> but I am going to go hiking tomorrow. I'm going to take a 10-mile hike because I literally have not done more than sit or, or stand for a long time now. So. <clears throat> what but you're overall, saying? it's summer. So what you're saying is you're going on a 16-kilometer hike. Whatever, you weird metric freaks. Weird, weird, you know, the whole world except you and Japan. Or you No, know, we didn't start those measurements, okay? You can blame the English. No, you took the English measurements, and you made them different, and you made them your own, your own version. Like, your uh, pounds is different. You play war games? What do you measure distance in? Hmm? Inches. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Fine. You do have a point. It's a good point. And, uh, hmm. I wonder if centimeters would be too hard because it'd be like smaller measurements, you know? Yeah, it would be. So it'd be like. Nobody hmm. wants to deal with that. So I apologize to the audience in advance. If you hear my crunching on crackers, I didn't get a chance to eat dinner. Like the second I got home, I had people over at my house filming some stuff because I have a bunch of equipment, so they're using it. Um, but it's totally cool. I don't know if you'll hear anything downstairs. Maybe. Um, and I'm also going to be very shameless about this, but one of my friends actually wrote a book, and she gave me a copy, and it's all kind of pseudo-softly based in the uh, Cthulhu universe. So uh, they're little children's stories, which I'm actually very excited to read. So. Wait, what, what universe? Do you the, the Cthulhu HP Lovecraft Universe. After that went to the public domain, everybody kind of got on board with it, but just a really creepy, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, Mountains of Madness and um, Arkham Asylum, I think is one. Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. So. That was Batman. Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum is Batman, but Arkham is a very uh, H.P. Lovecraft thing. Yes. So yeah. So you might hear noises outside of this room that would be from that. How's no. everybody else today? <laughs> Wait, do you have... I can't even find my own video. <laughs> oh, you're terrible at this. I'm just... Oh. Wait, wait. No. Nope. I also want to thank you, William Ford, for being one of the first to comment. Uh, and actually, he has a question for you, Dan. Are you able to see the questions or anything yet? Oh, I see something. I see <laughs> something. Ooh. Oh, there is a question. Yeah. I was thinking of getting into Warm Hordes, specifically Minions slash Blindwater Congregation. I know you play Thornfall. Can you talk of your experience with them? Damn. Um, turns out um, Minions are actually a lot of fun to play. The Thornfall is more of a joke faction but the Blind Water Pack is definitely a lot more competitive. And with Jaga Jaga, the sexy lady with her snake coming out soon, they may become a lot more competitive. Not a lot's confirmed for her, um, besides that she's going to have amphibious, I think. Mm. But that could be super powerful on the caster, especially if there's some way to create water. Um, but I don't think there is, as of now, besides the other caster who can create water. But unless you're in... A doubles tournament. There's nothing really to worry about. Unless they have shallow water on their side of the board and they're just like run their caster into it and you're like, Bleh. <laughs> So that would be funny. And uh, slightly overpowered in some lists. But that's okay because it's minions. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Blind water pack. There's, I mean, there's the flying circus list where you just throw wrestler upon wrestler and then you just get beside someone and then they can attack knock down. And so there's like, Bleh. And it's really funny. <clears throat> um, so there's that. There's also the list that I like to nickname I Like Turtles, which is you have Rana and Snapjaw and theme, and you bring six Ironback Spitters at a discount of two points a model. It's ridiculous. 
They're so that's so cheap. Mm -hmm. So cheap. Man. No, I got to play that the last Valhalla against this fellow from Canada. It was it was a really interesting game. That's right. Yeah, I remember you showed me pictures of that. Um, then there's like the Rask build where you kind of just get three units of Gatorman Posse, and uh, and you just have like a couple like three Gatorman Witch Doctors as well. You just give them all tough and undead, and you're just like running around. There's so many hit points, and then you feet, and then you can't hurt them for a turn basically because everyone's at a range. If you know, as you're approaching, you can't charge or see them or anything. Yeah. But that's pretty powerful too. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Gator and Posse are amazing. They're just amazing. You're going to want a Snap Jaw and the Rastler and a uh, little Squid Guy. What's he called? But no, they're, they're pretty standard. You'll want to you'll fool around with them. But the little the little Snap Jaw guy. No, no, that's wrong on Snap Jaw. The Bull Snapper. That's what he's called. The Bull Snapper has Spiny Growth, which is one of the most amazing uh, animuses in the game. Mostly because you get plus two armor, which is fantastic, and if any kind of war beast or war jack is hitting you, they're receiving D3 damage on every hit. No so, matter what. No, anyway. That's just, yeah. just good. It's a bit of an expensive army to build, though. Yeah. Game. Well, there's a new Gatorman kit that's out. And yeah. those models are beautiful. Some people have some bad things to say about them. And what I have to say to them is, whatever. I love them. They look like they're dancing and they're cool. And <laughs> I I still have the old Gatorman which dot okay, so these are these are my gators. Painted meh. Alright. They're chipped and like crazy. And then these are my friend's gators who he lent to borrow me or lent to me. I borrowed them. To uh, to play uh, a, a mini list. And he still hasn't even claimed the back because he bought three units of the new ones with his PG points. And so I'm just going to just just keep them until he asks for them. I actually said, I was like, do you, I had them in my case. I'm like, do you want them back? He's like, not today. And I brought him another day. I was like, do you want them back? Not today. So I just took them out and put them on my shelf, and they'll sit there until he claims them back, which might be never. So shh, I got a free unit of Gatorman. <laughs> You just admitted that on the internet. That I, I'm, I'm just keep safekeeping, right? Just keep it. <laughs> right then. Um, so we'll take a few questions and then we'll actually go into because D- Dan did think of the theme for this episode. Well, more That's or less, fun. whatever. Uh, Thomas Hill asks, Are either of you going to TempleCon? I have no idea. It's way too far away. We don't plan that far in advance. I'm sorry, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't plan like at all. I still haven't bought my plane tickets for Valhalla in like two months. Well, I'm driving, so this doesn't mean much to me. Um, let's see here. I think Dan should star in a spy movie where every disguise is a different beard. Sounds like something you'd see on, like, the Muppets. <laughs> we should do an elaborate, like, filming where I, like, grow out, like, the biggest, bushiest beard I can and then slowly <laughs> shave it into other beards <laughs> and then just film it, like, you know, in a row and then have it, like, chronologically, like, you know, mix and match, obviously. And then, and that, ooh, that'd be a fun movie. That you just use fake beards. Why would you? No, wait? no, it's better if it's real. Oh my goodness. It's like animatronics versus CG, you know. It, okay. It's a real argument, okay? So we'll, we'll start. So we'll start filming in about six months. Yeah, yeah. My beard's kind of pretty good. It's it's getting pretty uh, big. I was gonna like, no, nah, I'm gonna keep it smaller, but it's just, I like my beard. It's just, it's a good beard. You definitely have the, the facial hair thing going for you. A lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of poor gentlemen out there, my poor brothers, it's don't really have facial hair, so. Also, I want to be a rabbi for Halloween. I don't know if that's sacrilegious. Go get ordained. But I just, I already look enough like a Jew. Why not just become the Jew? Okay. Right? 
no disrespect for the religion at all. No. Or, Mockery is the I'm sorry, mimicking is the highest. <laughs> 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 highest compliment, right? I love how I knew what you were trying to say immediately. <laughs> um, all our comments disappeared. What happened? No, there we go. I see some. <laughs> I should play Infinity, apparently. I did play one game of Infinity. Or, no, I watched one game of Infinity. <laughs> Maybe two I games of Infinity. I played one game of Infinity, and I swear we were moving around in inches, so I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, and use a metric system. They still use inches, don't they? I thought so. I mean, it kind of would make sense. I think it's not really good to introduce a new game and be like, and we're going to use a different measuring system. <laughs> good luck with your measuring tapes. I hope you have metric on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> but Infinity's looks pretty fun. It looks... It has the same feel as... Or rather, Dark Potential has the same feel as Infinity, where... You just have small little amounts of guys, and any kind of mistake at all is just, like, brutal. Like, way worse than any other game, where just someone just dies and you're just done. And the game doesn't last. There's not a lot of turns, but every turn is really complicated. <laughs> no. yeah. I do have, actually, an Infinity model from last Valhalla. I haven't even opened up the package. I feel bad. I feel like someone else could have used that model more effectively. <laughs> like, I should have gifted it to somebody. Maybe. Well, I did just get a bunch of um, Malifo models that I built. Ah! They're tumbling. Okay, so there's these cool guys called Witchlings. And if you don't know what a Witchling is, this is a little guy. Ooh, we're going we're gonna to do some autofocus. Or not not autofocusing. Uh, manual focus. Wait, why aren't you? Aha! Look at them. They're little Jawas with swords. And they're just like, nah, 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 nah. They're amazing. And what's great, they're actually just one piece, too. No assembly required. Although, um, Sonya and Sam had, like, 15 pieces each for some reason. Like, Sam's, like, belt thing, like, took, like, it was, like, 20 pieces, I swear. But there's a cool little fire dude, too. Look at him, he's like, Bleh. just basically this list just turns everyone on fire. Just everyone. And then you can, like, shoot through walls for people on fire. And then when people are on fire and they die, you create more witchlings. And it's just, it seems like a really fun list to play. And when you kill a witchling, it, like, blows up and hurts everyone around them just for one point of damage. But it's still looks so cool. <laughs> just, just to have a bunch of little sacrificial guys you don't really care that much about. You kind of, like, send them in to die. And it's okay if they die. Because you'll probably get more. That really is your place, doesn't it? <laughs> Swarm! Wait, are you going to be part of the Malifaux League that uh, Mario okay. and Chrissy? So apparently, I, I feel like I was a little bit involuntarily pushed into it, but yes. Oh, really? <laughs> Mario was like, you're going to be part of the league, right? Just send me your information. You're going to be part of the league. <laughs> I don't know anything about running Vassal, but we'll see. So you know, I didn't either, but the first time I played a Vassal game, it was actually pretty intuitive and easy to do. Yeah. So... It's it's not too bad. Well, like, you can do that. I got it. <laughs> yeah, like you literally select the circle dude, and you like use the arrow keys to change the facing, and you just press forward on the button, and you move forward an inch, and you just kind of oh, like. Oh, it's more the question of actually setting it up, like my crew and all that stuff. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. actually get my rules down a little better, so, which would be helpful for what I have coming out. So. Oh. oh, oh. Anyway, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, Joshua T. asks, I'm new to wargaming. What is a good game to start out with? Now, that's a hard question because there's it's so open-ended. You have skirmish games. You have large-scale warfare games and huge amounts of uh, price variables. So, like, you can only ever answer, in my opinion, ever answer that question with a question like, what do you like to play? Do you like fantasy? Do you like historical? Uh, do you like horror? Um... More importantly, how much money do you have to burn? <laughs> what is your budget? <laughs> That's true. Because, like, 40K or even War Machine, you can drop hundreds of dollars pretty fast. So. Yes. <laughs> like, like first purchase. You're spending, <laughs> like, 300 plus dollars. Yeah, I've, I've looked in my, my War Machine case, not including any mercs or any ancillary armies that I've just collected. 
terrifying mount in that case. It doesn't even all fit in there. I... I, that's the problem, is I have so many models now they don't fit in the case, or even two cases. Oh, well, but then you're looking at it and you're like, man, a lot of money. <laughs> yes. Yes. But it is hilarious. Oh, someone, the Swamp Horror was a squid I was talking about. Thank you, Will. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so as, as far as that goes, I mean, people are talking about infinity in here. That's more of like a futuristic science fiction kind of um, motif to it. And um... mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> also... Okay, to, to start a new war game, I recommend finding what war games are played in your area. Because even if a game is awesome for you and is more appealing to you, if there's no one to play with, it's not the game for you. Because you're just gonna, it's not the game, it's just a hobby, right? So collecting a hobby, if that's all you're going for, great, collect whatever you want, pick some beautiful looking models, because there's plenty all around for any game system, and paint them up and whatever, build them, great. But if you're gonna play, go to some local game shops, find what they're playing on what nights, and often people will have demo armies, or let well, you can watch, and, and just spend some time, invest into just do a little bit of research in your local area, and that's what I would recommend. If you have everything at your disposal, then uh, to start out, probably something. It, again, it's so hard to say. It's really what mm, I don't know you well enough to to say. <laughs> Just randomly pick a game system. Play Necromunda. Good luck with that. I mean, and there's so many little games too. If you want to start off small, like you can play Blood Bowl or. Like, you can even play, like, 40K more as, like, a, um, what's the small skirmish little side rules that they have? It's called, why, oh, man, my brain is not working today. <laughs> it's, like, 32 degrees here, which isn't that bad. It's really not that bad, but when you're used to Super Canada cold, it just, your body's not used to it. So, <laughs> I'm a little wimp. But not that big of a wimp, because let me tell you, okay, side note, digression. So there is this place called Waterton. And it's very southern Alberta. Basically, like, you look across the lake that it's on, and you're looking in the U.S. Um, but there's all these big mountains, and apparently there's this big epic hike. I don't have any idea how many kilometers it is, but you peak three mountains during this hike. And this is what I'm probably going to be doing this Saturday. So pictures, hopefully, will follow. But uh, I might, I might just die of exhaustion. <laughs> like I'm like already starting to prepare my body for it. I'm like, hey, I need a good night's sleep. I need to eat properly. Like my body needs to be in the best condition possible. Wow, I'm jealous. Well, you say that now. I'm gonna be like on top of mountains, just like crawling, just like, don't leave me, guys. <laughs> I'm probably gonna be the most out of shape person there. Yes, yes, I would. End of digression. Okay. I say um, like that. Okay, another digression. I had, a, I had a university prof who would always do that. He'd be like talking about, you know, different functions and C++ and all of a sudden he'd be like, digression, and then just talk about this random thing for 20 minutes. And it was hilarious, and you know that you'd learn much in the class, but it was hilarious. And then he'd always end digression and then go back into the, to the, the course material. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm trying to keep up with the comments. Where is Owen tonight? He's doing his own thing, right, tonight? Or, or is he still doing his uh, game of the cooler? I didn't even talk to him, to be honest. <laughs> so Dan we... forgot that's where Owen is. Owen, where are you? Owen! He's not responding. <laughs> oh, okay. Now he's not responding. Probably because he forgot. Well, it's mostly just because I'm yelling at my wall and he lives like 3,000 kilometers away. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, well, Miranda's computer was being reformatted and reinstalled. To... That's true, yeah. So we didn't even know this was happening tonight. And so that's why I didn't schedule anything for people to see beforehand. And that is why I didn't really contact anyone else, because it might have just been the best. And there were other things I could have done tonight. But I'm glad to be able to be here. <laughs> so you're saying it's my <laughs> fault? Which is fine. I can handle it. But there's stuff to do all the time. Like, I have, I've been figuring out recently 
that people like to go to the lake. And there's, like, lakes all over Calgary, like, private little man-made lakes that are pretty decent with, like, docks and everything, and I love swimming. And there's, like, all these different private lakes that only, like, people in the community can go to, but I apparently have friends in all these different lakes, and they go all the time, and I just have to be, like, go with them, and it's free, and I love lakes. Although I hurt my, I hurt my shin pretty bad. <laughs> can you see? No, you can't really see. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. That was actually from a mountain hike, but then I bashed it again on a dock as I was trying to do a backflip. I was like getting up on the edge of the platform, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna do a backflip." And then I was standing way too far on the edge, and then it, like it jerked a little bit, and I slipped. It was like, <laughs> and then just like bashed my 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 shin on the way in. I'm fine. It just hurt a little bit. Okay, it hurt a lot, but you bumped yourself on the mountain, and then the lake tried to kill you. That's what lakes. It was do. cold water. It was soothing, but uh, man. Summer is great. Get out and do things. But uh, yeah. let, let's just transition right into the topic that I had not prepared, yeah, but just had the big right. idea. Um, basically, being, be staying true to yourself as a hobbyist amongst other friends and people who have no idea or maybe even judge you like you're a nerd or something and like normal, like real life. Like, <laughs> I think that's the wrong term for it. Just like you know, outside influences, because we all have our nerd hobby friend group, and then there's, like, outside of that. And it, for some of us, it's more of a, like, that's, like, the regular, the normal. Like, you don't hang out with other people who game all the time, and then you have your do one game night where you hang out with that group of friends, and there's that. Or maybe your main group of friends is the people you game with. I don't know. But whether it's friends or family or coworkers or whatever, it almost always comes up. Well, I mean... It, it helps when you have a YouTube channel. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? I'm like, well, I make videos. <laughs> For what you say? <laughs> well, let me tell you all about it. So uh, I seem to be explain. I seem to explain the hobby of wargaming a lot. Um, mainly just because I guess you could say I'm proud of it. It's just it's a great hobby. It you know it's it's way better than just like people who just like play video games or whatever where the reward is, like, better reflexes or better crisis management in a virtual world, like, maybe a little better hand-eye coordination. Like, that's, that's, that's all that you get out of it. Well, if, as a wargaming hobby, you're getting more of, like, you know, there's artistic skills. Um, you know, you're creating something. It's more of a hobby. So, you know, it's, it's like, are you wasting time or are you actually spending it as, like, a hobby where you're developing skills on the side while having fun. Like, that's more of a hobby, right? And wargaming is a hobby. It should be treated as a hobby. Um, and you're developing new friendships, and sometimes traveling, and it's just, it's great. And so I like to explain it to people. Um, oh, oh, okay. So, side note, there's a comment. It says, did Dan talk about his recent tournament? How did he do? Did he video or anything? So, we haven't had a hangout for like a month. Like, it's been a while. So this tournament I was going to, again, three hour, three hour drive away, 45 minutes into this drive, we see this guy who just, like, tumbled into, like, the merid like the median of the highway, and it was just awful. I mean, it's just kind of like back road, Cal like, Alberta. So basically it's just, like, two-lane highway, like, grass with some, like, wires and posts, and then some more grass, and then other side of the highway, and then just flat nothing for miles around. Um, and then tiny, tiny little mountains in the distance. Um, so anyway, so we saw this guy, like, ran up against the side. We're like, that's weird. And all of a sudden, we see, like, this big, like, thing, metal thing in the middle of the road, and we're just like, boom, boom. And we got two flat tires. And with two flat tires, it doesn't matter if you have a spare in the trunk, because you still have another flat tire. So we were screwed. And so because we were close enough to Calgary still, we are only 45 minutes out, we uh, had to cancel the trip, so there was no tournament. No tournament. Wait a minute. Is this where I saw your picture of you in a cop car? Oh, no. That was totally different illegal things. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't have to talk about that. we don't have to talk about that today. <laughs> we may, we may, it's, 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 it's an alright story. Um, where was I? Okay, so, yeah, so apparently what happened is this guy was driving down southbound on uh, Highway 2, and his wheel just came off. 
like the whole like socket of the wheel. Like I don't even know car terms, but it's just like the whole thing, just like. And apparently we're talking to someone else. And they're like, you know when that's happening. It starts shaking violently, and you slow down, and it happens, and it sucks, but you're under control. But apparently this guy didn't slow down. He's like, why is this truck so shaky? And he had this big trailer on the back, and this pickup truck, and it just like was a total write off. Luckily he had liability. So my friend's car was covered under insurance and our taxi ride home. And apparently they went for some chiropractic stuff. And they're like, because their necks and backs. I bounced around really well. I didn't really hurt at all afterwards. But, uh, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, like, basically he, he lost control. Obviously his wheel came off and he was going 120 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles. Probably around 80. I was going to say 70 or 80. Maybe like 70, 75. Um, so anyways, yeah, so he, like, scraped and hit, and I was thinking things flew out all over the other side of the road, and he cleaned up some of it, but failed to clear, like, the big trailer hitch thing that was, like, you, you know, it messed up the undercarriage of my friend's car a little bit, too. Oh, so, no. Like, it was just, it was just a mess. It was ridiculous. And then, and then another car came up behind us and hit it as well. Because <laughs> they didn't see us hit it, apparently. They had a family in the car. I felt worse for them. But there were so many mosquitoes out that day. Oh, my goodness. It was it was just it was bad. But then we just went back to the club afterwards, and we played some games. It wasn't a total loss of a day. But, uh, we're okay, then. Yeah, no. But I just haven't played a tournament forever, and it just seems... And I, haven't, and then I didn't get out to play very much. I did play this last past week, but uh, I'm not going to be able to play tomorrow, because tomorrow... I'm going to play X-Wing. We're having a little mini tournament just for fun. <sighs> but anyways, no tournament. No tournament. Just crazy, crazy things just fighting against me and my effort to play a competitive war machine. <laughs> Could have been worse. At least you guys were okay. Hey, there's someone from the Philippines. Yeah. I know one phrase in Tagalog. You want to hear it? Umbaho and kilikilimo. That's to you, Panora Wargamer. I'm sorry, I don't actually mean that. But that's, what? that's the only what? phrase I know, okay? Thank you. I wonder if they're going to comment and explain what it means. Alright, it means your armpits stink, okay? I learned this phrase when I was like 10 years old. Nah, maybe 12. That was like. 16 years ago. It's like over half of my life ago. But somehow I remember this phrase. And it's hilarious to me. And so I have to say it. Wow. Alright, I'm done. Where were we? We were talking about like dealing with people in real life about wargaming. <clears throat> what are your thoughts, Miranda? Uh, so, tell me if you all can hear me. because um, I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, really, all my friends already play war games. At least any of the ones that I end up socializing with, because I don't spend time working. And then war gaming actually, like, especially since I do a channel for it, takes up so much of my time that the only thing I'll do is see movies. So my immediate friends all play war games anyway, and that's 40k. Uh, starting Malifo, um, there's no meta here in Albuquerque for it, so <laughs> doing what I do best and strong arming one. <laughs> And uh, so I'm pushing that. Um, the only thing I've ever run into is at work, because I work at a, like a credit union. And so, you know, you have the banking personalities there, and they're like, oh, what do you do? I've talked to the CEO before, and I'm like, play miniature war games. And he's like, okay. <laughs> but nice, polite, okay. That's all I get. For the most part, though, I mean, it's only ever been positive. I mean, especially yeah. compared to something like chess, where you're like, no, this is a strategy game. Well, I find that society now, at least in North America, I assume in a lot of other places in the world, too, is uh, everyone's really trying to be, like, really politically correct and socially acceptable of whoever you are, however kind of crazy you are. And almost like the more crazy and weird you are, the more accepted you are in some ways. In a weird way. Does that make sense? Is that like a specifically American thing? I don't know. 
It's just kind of the vibe you get from society nowadays. Stupid hipsters. <laughs> you mean to look at the comments? <gasps> Are there any hipsters in there? <laughs> I don't care. If you're a hipster, I do not approve. I have friends that are hipsters, and they're great, and they're fun, but the fact that they're hipsters just, well, it's like like having like a third arm that's like grotesque out of the back. I'll still be your friend, and I won't judge you, but it's just it's just weird, and I don't approve of it. I won't judge you, but I will ridicule you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's like saying, with all due respect. I... But I don't respect hipsters. For being hipsters. I respect people for being people. I just don't respect hipsters for being hipsters. I have a joke about a hipster. You want to hear it? Okay. Why didn't the hipster eat the pizza? Because everyone else was eating pizza. Because it wasn't cool yet. Uh-uh. Oh. That's like a dad joke. That was really awful. I am terrible at jokes, but mm -hmm. there you go. Is it bad that a bunch of racist jokes just popped in my head? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, we're not going to share those. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I think a lot of people just need to be uh, just open with their wargamingness because the more that people know about it, the more... Just not so much ex more accept because it's already pretty acceptable. It's just more accepting people will just be like, oh, okay, you wore him. That's cool. Kind of like uh, like back in the day, like when people were playing sports. Like this is like way back in the day, maybe like 1800s, not early 1900s. I don't know, but like professional sports players were like ridiculed. They're like, get a real job, right? It was just like, why are you wasting? Or like actors. Like, actors were, like, you know, by, like, you know, the, the high anxiety. They're just, like, you're liars. You lie for your for your life. And it's just, like, but now actors and sports players are the highest paid and sometimes most listened to, for makes no, reason, no sense to me, for no people reason. In, in the world. Like, they just, they make so much money and they have so much influence about doing something that a few years ago was completely, like, just ridiculed. You know, and it's just people kept with it. It's kind of like, you know, eSports or electronic sports. Those people don't know what that is. Just basically playing video games on a competitive level um, enough that it's there. It's like a sports, and you have sponsorships, sure. themes, yeah. and everything. If you pursue any of those things, you still have people telling you you need to go get a real job because you're not going to be successful at it, and that those people who are aren't real people. And so it still right. happens. I mean... Right. It, Obviously exists, and obviously those people really made it there, but it's just not how a lot of people think. So, but I don't know that you necessarily worry about that. We're gaming. I don't know what kind of reaction. Like, what's the worst reaction you're gonna get out of telling someone you play war games? Unless you're like a little kid on a schoolyard, possibly being beat up. Yeah, I guess it's more like a like a public school or high school issue for like Maybe. you know being ashamed of it. But uh, I think I think more my point was is that like people aren't gonna tell you oh you should never do it give up on that but it's just like people just tell you to do your dreams all the time. <laughs> True. Um, but oh, dang, where was I going with this? I had something. I swear I did. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. It's gone. No wait. Yeah. No, it's like, oh, dang it. It's like right oh, there. Have you, have you ever thought? Like people do RC aircraft. People do, you know, right. trying to think of other, like, hobbies that involve real skill, you know, where, you, where you've taken a lot of time to learn something or put a lot of time into perfecting your models. I mean, it's a real hobby if it, if it takes real effort, I think. And um, I don't know. Be proud of it. I I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I completely lost my thoughts. <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure you and I have gotten more ridiculed for having the YouTube channel and for playing board, board games. 
it's not. Some people are like really. They're like, oh, you have a YouTube channel, and they're like really interested. They're like, oh, that's cool. And then they like tell them what it's about, and they're like, eh, I'm less interested now. <laughs> and you I'm like, whatever. Tutorials. Sorry. You don't do makeup tutorials. <laughs> no, I do not do. I do beard trimming tutorials. That's on my you, other channel. Did you guys not know about this? That's the one with like a quarter million subscribers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I should, I should do this. That's sounds. Mm, mm, beard. No, I need. See, my beard is too like it's rough and kind of curly when it comes in, so I can't really. It's really hard to style it. Like I've tried sometimes, and it's just not really, not really. <laughs> but. Uh, like put little braids and beads in there, like. I did do the braids thing. It hurt my face. It was like pulling on my face. And then I shaved it off like a day later. But I kept it for a full day. It was great. I was Witch Doctor Dan. Will you have, will you be rocking the big beard at Valhalla this year? I it, I don't know because if if I'm going if I commit to the rabbi for Halloween, then yes because Valhalla is right before Halloween. And so, like, Valhalla will end, and then I'll basically go back. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Because, wait, the, the October. Because it's like the 19th to 25th, or 20th to the 25th, right, of October? So, yeah, that'll be like the next week. Is, next week is Halloween. So, we'll see. We'll see. I, I mean, well, if you just tune into these. Things you can see on my updated beard as, as we continue on, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna let it grow a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna continue to let it grow. For now, we'll see. We'll see. It's only a couple months away. I recently watched your video actually with uh, the other Dan. You two were hanging out together, and I saw the cool effects you were kind of planning to put in some of your battle reports when you were first starting oh, your channel. Yeah. And your beard came out like in this crazy like shape that very squared at the bottom, but almost like pointed on the ends a little bit. <laughs> well, I was shaving like the sides, and it just was like growing out. It had like it was almost a year at that point of just constant beard. It was like down to here. It was so big. Like I still look at like my old pictures, and it's like holy crap. I was I don't think I'll ever have it that long again. But uh, it was great fun. It was great fun. So those visual effects, some of you will remember from my Kickstarter. Um, we were waiting on my friend to have his computer crapped out, and so he finally got a new computer, actually. Um, and to be honest, he uh, unfortunately... Okay, so actually, this is what happened. It's kind of sad, is that we were going to make battle reports together on my channel, but as he created battle reports on my channel and posted them, it was more of a like a recap, like take pictures and talk about it kind of thing, and like show your mouse around the screen a little bit, kind of explain what's happening. Um, and... Uh, Danny doesn't have as much experience doing battle reports, so, um, and he often had to have his baby with him. <laughs> as, that was the only way he could justify that time doing that. And so it just, they weren't as, compared to, you know, mini wargaming or your battle reports, it just wasn't near anywhere near the high quality battle reports. Like, he was having fun doing it, and so there's a lot of negative feedback, which really sucked, uh, which is really unfortunate. Um, I think that was part of because I did a Kickstarter and I got a lot of money and people were expecting really good battle reports and then that happened and people were just like, you know, just have that mix, you know, conception. So anyway, so he ended up just making his own little channel and he has a few subscribers and he has fun doing that. And so for him to work on my battle reports now, he owes me. I gave him some of the Kickstarter money to buy some Fantasy Army stuff. So he definitely owes me to do some graphical stuff. Um, besides just my little intro rock crumbling. So we'll possibly see some stuff, but uh, maybe in the rel soonish. Because he does have his new big crazy Mac computer now that has like bajillion amounts of RAM and CPU power. Hmm. So maybe we'll, we will actually see some of those, some of those cool graphics and uh, After Effects in my battle. They were, they were really cool. I was looking at the little... <laughs> Thing you had all going on there, it's like, hmm. Yeah, and those are just simple <laughs> things, too, right? But they just... The yeah, little, they like, just fire, like, shooting fire and, like, yep, an electric yep. spell or something getting shot. Yeah, like, what I'd have to do... Because I, I edited in Vegas, and he edits in uh, whatever that Mac program is. Uh, I don't know, I don't I use Mac. 
it's eh, people know. Anyway, so I would have to send all of my source files and everything over Dropbox or something, and then he could uh, open up and uh, do that. But uh, no, wargaming. Wargaming's fun, and it's great. And people don't appreciate what it is a lot of the time. And so when you do explain it, I like, I mean, I am me. And I, people often comment how, how just excited and happy I am about everything <laughs> for whatever reason. I always like take like, the bright side on things. And I don't know, I think everyone should do that, really. Like, life is so much better that way. Um, <laughs> but if you do that while explaining the hobby and just like those kind of things, I think pe- more people will, will just I'll listen a little bit more, right? And appreciate your appreciation for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to some comments. There you go. Yeah, I think we should answer some comments. We want the Dan and the Cop Car story now. Mm, we'll see. Um, any thoughts on new War Machine? <laughs> any thoughts on the new game War Machine Tactics? I purchased it. it seems pretty cool. A pair of video card eater rubber. <laughs> uh, seems like a good way to play. Even maybe learn how to play. Heck, I like the graphics, and maybe good to help paint your models from. Hmm. Thoughts, Miranda? I haven't played the beta yet. You haven't at all? No. I okay. have, like, the computer was, was dying on me, so I hadn't installed anything, and then we just reinstalled the OS today, so I'll see. I have my beta key, but I have not had a moment, like, but I have a lot of projects in the works right now. Because we need a showdown, Miranda. Huh? We need a showdown. Sorsha versus Striker. Okay. You got it. Sorsha will eat you alive. It's true. Sorsha is so powerful in the point battles. It's really scary. <laughs> She's so awesome. It's okay. Arcane shield up in my ironclad and see how it'll deal with him. Um, anyways, we'll get to that. It's okay. So my thoughts on it, because I've actually played it a little bit, um, is it's actually very similar to the actual game. Um, it's uh, facing isn't like you can't like facing is either like straight or like there's no diagonal facing, so it's like straight or the like 90 degree facing. But it kind of <laughs> like you get like a 180 arc still. So it's it's sometimes harder to do like those like, little janky, like, line of sight things where it's, like, perfect when you're playing a little more advanced play uh, that you want to. Um, but for the most part, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, it's really cool. You can always check your control area and, like, different spells. The graphics are really cool. Like, when Sorcerer casts, like, Fog of War, like, those, her whole control area gets all foggy. Then it gets annoying because you're like, I want to see my models. <laughs> I want to see the guys running around. It's all foggy. It's not, it's not overly overbearing, but it's still, it's there. And all of a sudden, it, like, you know, that turn where you need your focus or uh, there's not that much shooting stuff left and it goes away, you're like, oh, I can see so much better now. <laughs> yeah, that's but, a little... And I guess as far as army building, once the game's actually released fully, I presume that you'll have larger model access, so yeah. you'd, uh, learn. Well, the main difference is the solos are like super solos. So oh, like yeah. each solo, instead of having like one box, we'll have like I think it's 14 boxes. Hmm. And they take damage about the same way. So, like, you know, like a trencher will run in and, like, hit for, like, four damage or maybe six damage, eight damage if he crits or something like that. There's always a crit chance, and crits do more damage. So that's an added thing to the game, just kind of, it's just in there. There's always a chance that you guys do more damage than usual. Mm-hmm. Um, you, can, uh, you can shoot someone and try to knock them down a lot, so I don't know if they're going to keep that. It seems a little overpowered. Um, you can just, like, shoot people, shoot, 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 and then just, like, knock them. You can't, I don't think you can knock down jacks that way, but you can knock down infantry models that way. Um, little things like that. It's it, it, and There's things like little change. It's really cool to watch Krios feet and then the whole army just fall on their, on their faces. It's really <laughs> annoying. But it's, just, it's funny to see it actually happen, right? Because it's like somebody's yeah. like playing against men off, and you're always like, oh, I feet. And you put like this little line of markers of where everyone is knocked down. Or if your whole army's knocked down, it's all knocked down. But it's just like, okay, they're all knocked down, whatever. But like to see everyone actually on their butts, it's, it's, 
it's cool to see the game come to life. It's really cool. I don't super enjoy it because it's more slow paced. Um, kind of like a normal watching game. You'd almost want like to have them some kind of audio, like using Skype or Google Hangouts to talk to the opponent at the same time as you're playing. Um, because you can just like leave the game for like a long time. I guess you'd have time limits um, if you're playing online out of the beta. But it's just, it's a pretty solid game. It, it looks cool. The single player would be more appealing to me just kind of like through kind of like a story. Um, but uh, those turn-based games, like kind of like a, what's the other one, like the XCOM, stuff like that, it's cool, but it just, it doesn't keep my interest. Because I'm just used to playing games like uh, just real-time strategy, more like a, like I guess like Dota or StarCraft, um, Company of Heroes, even Command and Conquer a little bit, like all that kind of stuff where it's like you're constantly doing things, and it's you have to plan as you're building your army and your economy, and it's just it's just so much more energy in the game that when you like slow down and play like the turn-based games, I just I'm just like okay, come on, let's, let's do this, let's do this, <laughs> and I have to wait for the opponent. I'm just like okay, 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 I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna do this. And then I see them, and I see them contemplating, and I see this, and I see them contemplating, and they finally do what I predicted they were going to do, or if they don't do it, they're stupid, and they should have done that, and it's just... And it's not always like that, but it's just... It's too slow slow pace for me in general. I'll still like the game, I'll play it a little bit, but I don't think it'll be a main game for me, even though I do like playing a lot of video games. So, that's basically review of, of War Machine Tactics. It's, it's going to be pretty cool, I think. I just kind of want to see... Uh, uh, Jake's, because I have her model and I play with her on the board, so I want some backstory, how she becomes a more powerful warcaster. Because I think they have like a demo level or something where Jake has four focus but no spells. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, I can give some stuff to my jacks and they can do some things, but I'm too stupid to know any spells so far. <laughs> I am way too new to this. So, um, little. It it seems cool, but yeah, we should we should definitely play on like a hangout and uh, have have a face off. Face off, that'd be fantastic. It'd be uh, good. oh one one also says that Owen did a review of the um, War Machine Tactics game, so you can check it out. Check out more information aside from uh, Dan's rant here. But, you know. <laughs> Also, I was very kindly asked via people who would <laughs> know their phone number um, to plug, I guess, the um, Weekend Warriors, the Wargamer Consortium is doing their Weekend Warriors thing. And so it ends at some point, it runs to Labor Day. I'll post a link as soon as I figure out how. I don't even know anything about this. Weekend Warriors thing? Yeah. Well, it's a subscriber challenge. So, oh, here, let me... It's on the WGC WargamerConsortium.com website. Um, are you able to post links in the chat? Maybe. But they're doing their big thing. Um, but WGC has grown, and they're sponsoring like tournaments and stuff now, so... It's a good thing to support because it also helps keep you in the know of the different goings on around the country. And Chang is hilarious. Chang is fantastic. <laughs> he he's great. I uh, I'm actually really looking forward to hanging out with him. I assume he's coming to Valhalla. I think so. We actually should totally invite him to a hangout here. I bet he'd have fun. That's true, actually. We uh, we have met off John in the works. Do you? You know who that is. He's he's actually a really cool guy. So uh, <laughs> I don't think he likes me at all. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we had him scheduled, and then he canceled, and then we turned out that we had to cancel too. So it's fine. Um, yeah. So maybe even next time we do this, or I don't know, sometime. It's I think it'll be fun. Sounds cute. Uh, Andrew McCall, so Miranda mostly, and Dan, I purchased the Kador Battle Box. What would you do first to expand on that? So, Battle Box, that's uh, 
that's just Sorsha with the Juggernaut and the Destroyer, right? Not the two-person box, I'm assuming. I think so. You need Winter Guard. <laughs> you and your Winter Guard. You need UA and you need Captain Joe. You need infantry. And then you will rule. Yeah, you can't really bring Winter Guard by themselves. They kind of suck. Yeah. No, they gr they're they very much a... Um, what is it? You have to put all the pieces together for it to really work. So, um, But once they do, they're so good. <laughs> Aside from that, people love Iron Fang Pikemen and Kayazi and blah, 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 but Sorsha really does work best with the, with the um, Winter Guard. And they're not so expensive to get your hands on, and they're not so ridiculous to assemble, so. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my thought, because Iron Fang Pikemen, Pikemen I really like. Like, they're really cool, especially the, uh, the Black Fangs? What uh, are those? The Black Dragon, Black. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I, I think that they're really cool, and like, they have, like, the crit knockdown and the different things, and you can, like, speed them up, and it's just... And they got, like, a bunch of reach infantry is always really annoying to deal with, because as soon as they start engaging you, like, if, like sometimes you want to take a free strike, but with reach infantry, like, you leave and you're taking, like, five free strikes, because everyone's reaching you. <laughs> and you're just yeah. like... Ugh. And it's just so much more complicated to get around and move and do move and shenanigans. You just have to deal with them. Um, but then they have, like, shield wall, and they can be tough to get rid of. So I really like the Iron Fang, Iron Fang Pikemen route, but they are a lot more complicated to assemble and probably more expensive models because there's more to them. Well, if you're just starting the game, like, I think Winter Guard are actually really good for, for beginning with. I think so, too. I'll have to agree with you on that one. Winter Guard plus UA plus Cosmic Joe. Yes, you really do need all of them, because if you just get the Winter Guard, you're going to be like, these models are awful. <laughs> but then you see. There was a local uh, Kator player who's new, and uh, he's actually been live with us a few times. Um, but uh, I didn't know Winter Guard was so bad by themselves. He has a Winter Guard, and I was like, I'm like, no, 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 you need to do this with them. I'm like, wait, they don't have that ability by themselves. And, oh, wait, they... These guys are terrible. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you need the UA in this list. <laughs> and you need the Black Comic Show. But it's how their report six is in it. So. I was just like, yeah. And it was just like, whatever. He was learning the game, so it didn't really matter too, too much. But it was just like, whew. <laughs> it's just, that's unfortunate about them, though. It's like, it's an all or nothing package. How many points is that for full, full Winter Guard plus UA plus Cov? Um, it's either going to be 10 points or 13 points if you load it up with the Rocketeers. Right. Can you, I guess you could take a min unit. I don't know how recommended that is. Uh, I've never done it. Usually you need a tar pit, so you want more, more models. Um, right. I don't know why you'd run a min unit, really, with those. I guess if you're, if you're point scraping, you want some other cool things in there. Well, I mean, like, what, though? <laughs> Are you just running them up to, like, objective or something? Like, you need that extra... What is it? Is it three points for their UA? Uh, two points for the UA. Two points for Cognitive Joe. So they're, they're five and eight? Like, the points-wise? So there's five points for six of them or eight points for ten of them? Four, six. Well, oh, they're four, six. Oh, that's right, because Cognitive Joe. That's right. Of course. So yeah, they're super cheap. Yeah. They're super cheap. So they're very efficient. They're also my best painted unit. Every every faction seems to have a better four six unit than Signar. Oh, just... dude, I was looking out for Signar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing in here. What's four six? Oh, what is four six? It's a uh, sword knights. The sword knights are okay. Yeah, they're not good. They, I mean, they can be good, but it's just like it's so hard to try to make them be good. And then like Menoth brings zealots, and you're like, no, oh, those are so amazing, <laughs> like so amazing. <laughs> Although sword knights, I do enjoy in some of my lists, just because they are cheap and they have defensive line, and you throw arcane shield on them, and then all of a sudden they're defense thirteen, armor nineteen guys that you only pay six points for. There's ten of them, so they can be useful, but again, that's six points. Or you could bring something that's effective. Or you could bring Boom Hatler and Company, which I know is ten, but I mean, you're I'm nine, early nine points. 
Mm, I thought. Oh, it's only nine. I thought Boom Hollow Company's ten points. I will double check. I'm forward commander. Mayday <laughs> um, also asks any thoughts on the new rollout from Privateer Press, which I received an email today about. War Machine High Command, Colossal Warfare. Also, it appears new models coming out too, unless I got that wrong. Any additional comments? Uh, so, no, how many people in this chat have played High Command? Just curious. You have? Do you, what do you think of it? High Command. It's it's a cool deck building game. It's it's interesting. I played it. I enjoyed it. I wasn't hooked. But yeah. again. I'm not one for a bunch of little crazy games, enjoying all of them. I like to focus on like kind of like bigger games, yeah. and uh, and do that. And it's just that it's kind of like I, with the friends that I have, it's we're either playing High Command or War Machine, and War Machine wow. is just a lot better than High Command. <laughs> it's just like why would I play High Command when I could play War Machine? Is kind of like the argument that I have. And the people who are going to be interested in High Command are the people that you're going to be playing War Machine with. And so I understand sometimes you're, like, you know, over at a friend's house, just a kitchen table, you don't want to bring your whole army over, or, you know, you can have four people over for a little bit of night of fun. And, that, and, it's, and it's good, and it's a pretty good game for that. But in general, people, if you're playing High Command on a regular basis, I don't, I don't see why you're just not playing War Machine. But oh. it is a fun game. It is a fun game, and it's worth trying out, I would say. So I should take the wrapping off of my box and actually play it? Play it? I'd give it a run. I'd give it a go. You know. Uh, maybe when I come visit, we can do it. If I remember any of the rules. <laughs> you know, I'm play it twice. Uh, you're right. Gregor Boomhauer and Company is a 6-9 unit because he has a minimum. <laughs> His brain knows. Not a lot, but some things. Some, some things he does know. <laughs> Ooh, I like this comment from... Uh, wouldn't it be a test of character of others if you tell them you do play or into something offbeat and they react negatively to you? Then perhaps they aren't the type of person you'd bother to hang out with anyhow. The folk I hang out with are strange, weird, etc. I love them all. Just the thought from one odd ball. And uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. Sometimes I find myself doing things that are a little more off the wall than I would normally do just to see how someone's going to react to it. I'm like, is this person worth getting to know more and becoming a friend with? <laughs> and I just like do random things. I'm just like, mm, and, I, and I observe. I, it looks like I'm doing crazy backflips and, and running around screaming like a chicken, but really, I'm observing you. That's what's actually happened. That's what's actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, my whole life, I've always, I, for the longest time, I just sat on the outside of social interactions and just kind of observed people. And I learned a lot. And I kind of learned how to be socially acceptable, I guess you could say. But then I turned out enjoying it and having fun. It kind of became more of that. And it's just... So I know how to actually interact with people in a group of strangers and different situations with different types of people, too. And it's kind of interesting to know. But, uh, yeah, you just keep observing and learning and learning how to react in certain situations and stuff. But uh, it's just... The, the whole social aspect is really, really interesting to me and really cool. But... Uh, what it comes down to is that when I re want to relax and just be myself, I feel most at home among gamers, among among war gamers, and it's just it's just we're the most relaxed people, non-judgmental people, and just there to have fun, and for the most part, like just are appreciative of other people who also share the same hobby, and don't want to like burn any bridges or anything, and just want to keep up relationships, and it's and it's super awesome. So props, props to you, war gamers out there, and to me. That's right. You give yourself a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I, I truly, largely agree. A lot of the people I know who play specifically war games are very non-aggressive people, uh, just nice and easygoing to talk to, which is funny because you know you play a game with them and you're like, I'm going to try and kill you. By the way, my name is so and so. How are you today? And then you just have this pleasant chat the whole time. It's I love it. It's actually really satisfying because I, I you know, played video games too, and that's more of the where you're yelling at each other and you're like trash talking each other all day long. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, I love the rage that comes from video games, especially in games that are like team games, like uh, like Dota. No, it happens in StarCraft too. I was like, well, like when you're just like playing and someone just like just loses their crap, they just they just lose it, and they're just like just off and just go and go. And you just I just can't help but smile every time. Like it's hilarious, <laughs> especially when you get like ooh, I'm gonna call. It's not terror number. Hello. <laughs> okay then. Uh, yeah. So. Free cruise in the Bahamas. Screw you. All right. What? That was a free cruise to the Bahamas. Why did you hang up on them? Because it was the same time as Valhalla, obviously. Uh, maybe not. Oh, maybe I should call them back. <laughs> oh. So, uh, so there's this there's this YouTube channel called Devin Supertramp, and there's this guy named Devin, and he goes around like all around the world and films really cool stuff, like being sponsored by like Mountain Dew and this company called like Bare Naked who does like uh, like trail mix stuff, or, I don't know, and then or this, or different video games. He does like Assassin's Creed videos, and he gets like crazy people who do parkour and like dress up in Assassin's. He does one in Paris recently. And it's like, there's guys in Paris running along the rooftops in Assassin's Creed costumes. They're doing, like, really crazy, dangerous things. And it looks awesome. And you're like, wow. And then, like, a behind the scenes, they're like, we've just been running away from the cops all day today. <laughs> just like, we've just been avoiding the police filming this video. And you're just like, respect. And it just, he gets amazing shots. And he just, I really respect him as, as like, a filmmaker. And he just, and he just, he has that ringtone. He has that kind of upbeat music all the time. And so, just Kind of reminds me of that kind of stuff. And I like it. It's like a summer theme music. Just go out and do stuff. All right. I don't know how that relates to anything. But, uh. Oh, it sounds like an 80s movie. Mm-hmm. All right. What other comments have we got in here? We should probably kind of wrap it up soon. I think we've already been yammering on for like an hour. Well, that's true. Time flies when you're yammering like an idiot. Also when you're having fun, I heard. Oh, well, that's good. That is very good. But, uh, all right, well, what... Okay, so, I don't know if you're willing to disclose this to the public or not, but I'm just going to ask you the question anyways, Miranda. How close are you to fulfilling your, your Kickstarter commitment? So, okay, any time I give an answer to that, something breaks or... <laughs> okay, we'll just avoid that question now if you're going to ask it. Oh, I'm literally like... Soon, and I'm going as fast as I can, but every <laughs> single time, like, I've had a pressure pot pseudo explode in my kitchen already. I've had, like... How could you share the story with me? Affected me? Because the screws that you used to tie down got stripped from so much wear, and one of them popped off in the kitchen. I look over, like, oh, crap. It, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't that bad. Nothing broke. Except for that, but yeah, so I had to go get a new one. It was a big pain in the butt. So it's happening. I have a lot of hope for getting this done, and there's been some cool new developments that will help get it done. But yeah, I unfortunately have grown entirely too suspicious, like superstitious about it. <laughs> I've had a horrible run of like things breaking or weird things happening. So, so we'll, just, we'll just let you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can pretty confidently say it'll be 100% done before Valhalla. Yeah, I'm. Man, I'm getting. Man, Valhalla's coming up quick. I'm so excited. Like the make videos with Dave and you and just and Chung and whoever else is there. If you're coming. A rematch game too, anyways. Uh, rematch. Why you you want to lose again on camera? Because I can do that all day, but, you know, maybe I'll just, like, I'll lose and I'll be like, another one! I already hand my, handicapped myself last game. I was playing Darius. Oh, please. And it wasn't even with the storm Yeah, I guess I should be there. <laughs> I was so scared of your list. I thought you were going to slaughter me, and somehow I got the alpha strike. Well, no. <laughs> like, the, the um, Shark, or not Shark Trooper, the Demacore run. Just not very far. They run as fast as your jacks and don't hit as hard. 
They have nothing to They can't vote as hard. They just can't buy more attacks. Yeah. I mean, they're Fat 14s. I guess Signar Jacks are kind of pillow fisted in that regard. Are Hammersmiths 14s? No, they're 17, but your guys are Weapon Masters, aren't they? No. I mean, they can choose to be a Weapon Master or get a backswing. So, I mean, yeah, I could roll three dice on it, which I did against yeah. your, uh, your um, Thunderhead. True. Man, we really do have to play another game. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to it, even Great. though it's a really long drive. <laughs> yeah. Um, any last comments? I don't see anything. The f man, the Philippines guy didn't comment again. I don't know if I offended them with sticky arm. Oh no, I hope not. I kind of hope I did, because it's a hilarious story. But at the same time, really, I don't. I really no. There's no way. There's no way he was offended by that. Right? I'm just gonna assume not. I'm just gonna assume how everybody feels here. All right. No, I don't want to. I I can't tell my Dan in the cop car story because it's so anticlimactic. Like it's just. Well, okay, so make it make better. Up, I can make up a story. You have to make it better, and then next time you can tell our, our right. fantastic story about how you were stealing a rainbow or something. Rainbows cannot be stolen; they have to be gifted. Everybody knows that. It's like you know nothing, Miranda. I don't. I I know as a little kid, I used to go chase rainbows. That was a problem. <laughs> The little kid running around just like bonking her head on the trees. She's like, hey, where oh, you go? I was gonna catch that darn rainbow. Uh, and the leprechauns just laughed at us. Um, anyways, we'll just leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, Thanks for fun. watching our pseudo content filled session. I mean, we talked about half of this time about War Machine or gaming stuff. <laughs> But I do want to ask a question of the audience, like, in general, what do you guys end up doing while you're watching our videos? Are you mostly, um, you know, painting or hobbying or doing something else or, I don't know, just curious how you spend your time with us? I mean, Dan does this all day long. It's actually incredible. I just, I just stare at myself. You can say right there. Aww. Thanks, Twisted Bishop. The casting resin thing's almost over, and I have learned so much from it, I wouldn't trade it for anything, but I'm super ready for it to be done now. <laughs> well, thanks again. All right. We're going to peace out, so we'll see you hopefully in two weeks. Same bat time, same bat channel. Yes. And, um, and I'll, I'll hopefully also put a like an event that you guys can, you know, Put a, save the link to or whatever, come back to. Because I didn't do it this, this time. We'll try to so, be nice again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. anyways, see you Thank guys you. later. And don't forget to uh, to lick your models before rolling your lucky dice. <laughs> <laughs>